All right, so thank you everyone for the support on these videos uh, for the 23 Honda CRV. I appreciate all the positive comments. This is not a regular YouTube channel. I don't really make videos. These are just all on my phone. Um, just putting a consumer view out there on this car, just because when I was trying to buy it, there was literally no videos from a consumer perspective, just the same few reviewers all touching on the same uh, perspectives. So I hope this guys gives you a good impression of the car or helps you decide if maybe this isn't the right car for you. Um, but yeah, leave a comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff. All of that has been motivating me to continue making more of these videos for you guys. All right, so one of the things I wish I knew before purchasing this car was to make sure the dealer didn't drill these holes straight into the bumper. Um, I guess as soon as the car lands on the lot, they automatically just drill on that license plate holder. I don't know why they have to destroy the bumper like this. They could have easily just used an adhesive. I, of course, did not want a front plate on, even though I'm in a state where I guess two plates are required. But of course, you see a million Teslas on the road without any front plates and no one cares. So in terms of looks, I like it without a plate. Um, but now I have to deal with these holes here. So I purchased a little bumper plug kit off Amazon and we're gonna try to fit these and see how that looks. So here is the before. We can see those three holes right there. Again, drilled straight into the car, no regard. All right, and here it is after the bumper plugs. So I got those going in right there and right there. And it doesn't look too different from these little rivets we got going on. So I think that looks a lot better than it did a few minutes ago. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should I go to the dealer and argue to have the whole bumper replaced or just leave those there in case I ever do need to put my front plate back on? Let's see. And again, this kit here is only like 10 bucks on Amazon. I will leave a kit, I'll leave a link in the description below in case the same thing happened to you guys. All right, second thing I wish I knew was to check every single inch of the car for any scuffs or scratches. These marks that you see right here, I kind of found after a week of having the car. I don't know if like a tech did this as they were removing all the plastic and installing anything into the car. Um, it was not the window tinting guy because it was there before, but as you can see, super annoying. So I went back and they gave me this little touch up paint canister, so. That's all they would kind of do for me, so I'm gonna try to apply that today and see if we can fix these. But again, if you're at the dealer, make sure to check every single inch of your car. I kind of wasn't able to because I was purchasing the car at night. Um, do not purchase a car at night, you can't see anything. Um, but yeah, let's see how that looks in a second. This thing's pretty cool. It's got a little tip to smooth out the scratches. The top part is the paint itself, and then the bottom part twists off for another top coat. So here's the before, and then I'll do an after in just a second. So here it is, right as we're painting it. Color, close but not quite. Uh, maybe when it dries up fully it'll change. But of course with any touch up, it's gonna be a little blotchy, never quite as smooth as the original, but you know, better than nothing. All right, so another thing, um, wish I knew, but I guess easy to look up. This car does not have a spare tire underneath. Um, under here is just the battery, a one kilowatt battery pack. There is no spare tire like the normal version of this car. The hybrid does not have the battery. We do have this fix a flat kit in here. Let's see if we can get this out of the way. All right, so we have fix a flat kit. Um, could not tell you how to use that. I should look into it. Let's see what we got here. All right, looks like you can fix your tires and they'll be good for, I guess, up to 50 miles per hour after that. It's got a little pump. Um, strapped in, I don't really want to undo that. But anyway, it looks like it's a little pump and who knows what else to fix your tire in case you did get a flat. You also got this little um, gas tank funnel 
that is if you are trying to add any additives to your car. So, as you know, not an average gas tank. It's got the newer stop block there. So you'll need that little funnel if you want to add any fuel cleaners, seafoam, things like that. All right. All right, so our crossbars got delivered. I purchased these from Sons Honda for about $188. Um, Jermaine Honda of College Hills had them for about $201 and then my dealer wanted to sell them to me for like over $400. Um, all you have to do is type the part number online and you can get a bunch of different dealers and just check the price, check the shipping, whatever works best for your area. But I got these for much, much less than I would have from my dealer. I'm going to go ahead and install these on the CRV. And all the instructions you need, um, the College Hills Honda, they post the PDF for any single part, no matter how big or small, they got the full PDF of how to install everything. Um, so if you're not sure how to do it for whatever part you got, you can just pull it from their website. It's the same instruction sheet that the dealerships get for their text to put these on your cars. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those on slowly and we'll take little progress videos along the way. And just a heads up for tools, you will need a little torque wrench. Let's see if you can see that there. Just a little hex tip. These ones right there um, to install these guys. All right, to start the installation, we basically remove these little screw cap covers. They're just plastic covers that go into here. And then we put our little fitting on as such. This is for the left side. And that's gonna go right over there. And then we're gonna put the actual Torque X uh, metal bolts into here. Um, do that for all four sides and then the roof rails will sit on top. All right, excuse the dirt, we'll get this thing washed, but we have this side on and then we have that side on as well. We will now proceed with the bar placement and the Torque X screw installation. All right, next you're gonna see that there is a longer crossbar and a shorter crossbar. Uh, shorter one goes in the back, longer one goes in the front, and then they have little left and right indications, so let's pop those on. Then we just have to use these little Torque X screws and place those into little holes where we remove the cover, and you're done. It's pretty, pretty simple installation. Highly recommend not paying your dealer three, four hundred dollars to do this. It it can be on in like 10, 15 minutes. All right, let's get those on. All right, and just like that, four easy screws on each bar and they are both installed. Uh, pretty easy installation. We'll keep those caps for later in case we ever wanna take these off, but much nicer, sportier look now. I can put my little bike on there if I want. Um, yeah, great fit. So I'll be doing a little mileage test. I keep my receipts and how much I fill up at each refueling. I always calculate the mileage, so I got a pretty good number so far. Um, we'll see if that changes with these bars and if that affects the aerodynamics of this thing. All right. And here is the look of the CRV with those crossbars installed see up top and let's see from the back but yeah pretty quick installation anybody could do it if you can build ikea furniture it's way easier to put these on and do not pay your dealer if you do want crossbars again i bought those for 188 dollars i believe it was like $30 to ship and it took about 10-15 minutes to install all right so now we're going to talk a little bit about the regenerative braking so when you put the car into this b mode here um, it's the same thing as drive except that when your foot is off the gas um, you'll see that this little green bar on the left is going to start filling up Basically, the, the faster you're going and when you let off your gas, that thing's gonna increase a lot more. Um, it's gonna send that extra power from the brakes to the battery, um, which is really nice. And what kind of controls the degree of that is gonna be these little paddle shifters here. So you got the one on the left 
and then the one on the right. And as you can see here, the little bar changes. So we got one, two, three, and four. When it's on four, it's just you get more braking happening when you let off the gas. Um, and that just means more power to your battery. Let's see if we can see a little bit here, not really. I'm gonna drive through. Um, you can see the car's in EV mode, but again, using those paddle shifters um, is really nice way to brake. It is not like a normal car where when you have paddle shifters, it's basically for changing your gears up and down. Uh, this is just for determining how much you're gonna slow down. And it's pretty nice when you're coming up to like a stoplight or somewhere general and you, you just don't have to use your brakes as much. You just increase the paddle shift and your car slows down a lot more to the point where I'm like rarely using the brake just for that last bit when I hit the light. Um, and that way I get to save more energy and it sends it back, um, back into the battery. The battery on this car is just a one kilowatt battery. So it's not gonna, you know, stay in EV mode forever. Um, you guys wanted to look at this. So basically this is the battery bar. It will go up and down. If you drive down like a really steep hill for a couple hundred feet, it'll fill up like one, two bars. Um, I can probably go like one to two miles with this battery in just full EV mode. Um, to my knowledge, there's no way to just force this thing into EV mode. It decides on its own based off where the battery is and the gas and fuel and all that. Um, but if you're driving pretty slow, then it's gonna stay in EV mode for as long as it can. So right now, I'm not in the street, I'm just pulling up through a drive through but you can see it just stays in EV mode the whole time because we're driving pretty slow, there's no engine noise, um, mileage goes way up when we do this. All right, so what you just saw there was me in a straightaway um, using those shifters. You saw the little green bar go down. Um, that just means more power going to the battery. And I was progressively, it's weird, the minus one actually is the one that's increasing the amount of braking. Um, but you saw that the bar got larger and larger, just more power was headed um, towards that battery. And you know, our current drive is around 32 miles per gallon. Still have about that much mile range left. Um, total for the trip right now, let's see, what are we doing? We got 35.8 miles per gallon. We have driven 220 miles, just hit our 2000 mile mark. Um, another feature about that regenerative braking is it does not allow, you can't be in cruise control mode when you have um, it set to B. You have to set it to D to use your accelerated cruise control. That does not mean you don't get regenerative braking. Um, I think you just have to shift it to D so the car's computer can handle everything um, on its own. Um, but basically, the, once you turn this on, you know, it's, it's using that radar to gauge the cars in front of you, speed up and slow down. It works very, very well. I rarely touch um, the gas or brake when I am driving on the freeway. Almost never it does the whole thing for you. Um, but you will see that green bar increase and decrease when it does need to speed up and slow down. So you're still getting regenerative braking when you have accelerated cruise control on, even though you're not in regen braking mode. So don't worry about that. Um, that was one concern I had because I didn't want to lose the regenerative braking benefits just because I wanted to use cruise control, but that is not the case. All right, so I did want to show you guys the backup camera. It does have three different views. So you got your normal, you got your fish eyes so you can see cars from way out there, which is really nice when you're backing out of like a parking lot. And then you have this top down, which is amazing. This lets me see, you know, I'm in my garage. I can close the door and not hit the back of my car. Um, it's also great for just backing up. Let's see, we're backing up there. So it just lets you get like as close as you can to whatever you're trying to park against, um, which is super nice. And again, um, the car is pretty loud with that sound. Open the door. 
so you can hear how loud that is inside of a garage. Um, not as loud outside, but it is echoing inside of here. So very loud backup noise, which is, I don't mind it. I like the sound. Some of you guys were also curious on how I installed my cameras. So it doesn't take much time at all. It's just straight up pushing the wire into the lining here. There is space under here, so you can just squish it in. I ran it all the way around. It comes down here in the crease again. Not super clean for this one, but you know, into the 12 volt and it's fine, it's out of the way. A little extra wire here. Um, if you're really ambitious, you can install it in through there, have it go through here, maybe through there, here, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I just left a little slack and that closes just fine with it. So it just goes down like that. Alright, and then for the front dash cam, also, you know, pretty quick five minute install. Just literally, you push the wire um, between the crease here, and you know, there's a little bit of space, so it fits in nicely. It goes all the way down, comes around here, drop it on the side, runs under the back, under the mat, up the side here, and just into the 12 volt plug there. It turns on and off by itself when you turn on and off the car. Um, pretty simple and then I do have a camera on the side right here as well um, and that same thing it's that second wire there runs down here fits under all of this on the side paneling goes through the back and then you know comes up around there so pretty easy um, this one took a little bit longer just to fish through push it into the plastic but uh, pretty easy if you want to get a multiple dash cam setup you don't need that many I'm just a little bit extra with my dash cams. They have saved me in accidents before, um, 